Spectacular, everybody having fun? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, during this beginning portion of the show, we're just getting you to know who these comedians are that will be solving your problems, but we're going to want to make sure that you guys get your problem slips turned in, so our stage manager is going to be around to make sure that everybody's problems are turned in and ready. Um, a couple more things that I was just thinking about that have happened recently that are funny. Did you guys know that it was the 25th anniversary of the Max Line, which opened on Labor Day in 1986? It's true. Um, the Max Line actually has the second most riders of any 25-year-old in Portland. <laughs> uh, please welcome to the stage our second problem-solving comedic genius for the evening. You may have seen her opening for Arch Barker from Flight of the Concords when he was in town. She's a regular host over at Helium Comedy Club, and she hosts the open mic that takes place second and fourth, third, er, second and fourth Sundays at Curious Comedy Theater on this very stage. Please welcome Virginia Jones. Well, thanks everybody. You know, you either know who I am or you're gonna fucking find out. <laughs> Two ways about it. I did a show recently. Um, the guy told me after the show, the bar owner said, uh, you know, <laughs> I usually don't think women are funny, but you're really funny. <laughs> and I told him, like, I know that that seems like a compliment. But it is essentially like telling a black person, you, you're one of the good ones. Um, <laughs> so please avoid doing that. Uh, is everybody having a good summer? Yeah? It, uh, God damn it, it's summer today. I, I kind of like it when it's 100 degrees. I like these like super hot days because I just like it when I can smell, you know, like walk around and smell my own organs cooking inside my body. <laughs> it's like living in a barbecue. I do, um, I ride a bike and uh, not the like the room room. I'm middle aged and leather kind of a bike, but like I'm gonna save the world whether you want me to or not, like that kind of, <laughs> unless I get hit by a truck, like that kind of bike. And um, it's sometimes a little bit challenging in the summertime for a lady to ride a bike, all right, ladies, a wink. <laughs> because despite an extensive letter writing campaign, Monistat still refuses to make a goddamn bike seat <laughs> because it would make my life easier. <laughs> I read a weird thing though. Um, There's a study that came out that bike commuters are actually bad for the planet, like we try to be so green but we're bad for the planet because we, you know, live longer and consume more resources than regular people. And here I'm talking about in general, obviously not, not those of us who are hit by trucks. Um, and if we really loved the earth, what we would do is ride scooters and smoke. <laughs> like the Italians. Uh, and the French have taken it one, I mean, in that way, hipsters are the ultimate environmentalists, I guess. Uh, plus a certain number of them will overdose on heroin, but um, <laughs> the French have actually taken it one step further. They stopped bathing to save water for the environment. No one, uh, no one asked them to. <laughs> My favorite thing about bike culture if that can be said to be a thing, and I'm not entirely sure that it can, but um, my favorite thing was when people get those little like totes, those little like nylon things, they put them on the back of their bike and they just put their kids in it. <laughs> Stick them in there. I love it, because to me it says, you know what? I'm not like 100% sure I wanted to have kids. <laughs> I'm going to put Jasper in this nylon tote and let God decide, you know. <laughs> Leave it up to the man. So, I think we're in a time in history where we can agree that global warming is a real thing. It's not bullshit. No amount of Re Republican double talk is going to make it go away. Um, but we're Americans, and it's time for us to find a way to spin this positive. You know? Uh, look for the bright side, is what I'm saying. Like, Portland. When's the last time frogs ever kept you up at night? <laughs> it's been years. Because there are no frogs. Also, you know that expensive like glacier water, the high-end bottled water? Pay through the nose for it. Just wait. A couple years from now, your basement's going to be full of glacier water. <laughs> Just fresh from the polar ice caps. It's going to save you dollars a month. 
I will. So um, I was born, uh, I'm a Texan. I'm from a red state. Uh, and politically, it was not my thing. Um, tall, smart ass, weird lady, didn't go over there. <laughs> didn't go over at all. Doesn't go over great here, but I'm doing my best. Um, but I don't know if you guys have lived in a red state, but it's different, it's different than this. And a lot of it is like hearing problems. Like you say stuff and people hear it differently. Like you say atheist and they hear Satanist. <laughs> Or you say feminist, and they hear lesbian serial killing prostitute. <laughs> it was very strange. My um, growing up in Texas, I was a fag hag, which did not help. Which did not help matters. But one of my best friends uh, he came out to his mother as gay in high school, and she freaked out because she was a Texas mom and what she gonna do. And um, she got rid of his culture club records. <laughs> because they were making him gay. <laughs> and like, you know, that seems questionable logic, but you can kind of get it. Like, at the time, Boy George was kind of a comely young lady who might have <laughs> tricked some people into dick sucking, I guess. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's making a lot of people gay now. Because now he looks like Jabba the Hutt in like a very fancy hat. <laughs> but, uh, so she had a problem, and that was her solution, right? She got rid of the Culture Club records. And uh, it was weird because the next week, their garbage man was gay. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I'll tumble for you, baby. <laughs> I, um, politics are weird because they, they separate us on, on kind of artificial lines. Like every time, you know, we're gearing up for another. Uh, election season, and you're going to find the left and the right dividing each other, like on two two very important issues, you know, abortion and, and gay rights, very important issues. <sighs> but you don't have to think about them every day. Like, you know, yes, gays should be able to get married; they should have equal rights. But you don't have to get ma gay married every goddamn day. You don't have to have an abortion every day, and if you do, you have problems bigger than what comedy can help you with. <laughs> because you are the most fertile whore in the universe. <laughs> I didn't come here to get a ton political, but I did want to share with you guys. It's not popular, but I, I am 100% against gay abortion. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I don't want my tax dollars to fund it. Luckily, it is hardly ever necessary, because usually when a gay man thinks he's pregnant, just constipated. Um, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about religion a little bit. Uh, I grew up Mormon, like most of you, and uh, and so that makes sense to me. You know, space Jesus and Native Americans and talking rocks. It all makes sense. Uh, magic underwear, hating black people. Absolutely. Um, if you don't know about the hating black people, talk to me after the show. Uh, Mormons do it. Um, but uh, Pope Benedict, he's always been in kind of a bit of trouble. He's never, never quite been as popular as Pope John Paul. And a lot of it is appearance. Like Pope John Paul was just so like friendly and grandfatherly and like rosy cheeks, you know. And Pope Benedict just always looks like he's starving <laughs> for brains. And um, <laughs> it's been very hard for him. And, and, and I must say, he was off, I was off the wagon very early because like, when you get to be Pope, you get to, there's only a couple things you get to do in life, jobs you get, where you get to pick the name you want. And it's, you know, Pope and stripper. <laughs> you go through your whole name is Ashley and suddenly you're Sapphire on the main stage. Like he could have been anything. He could have been anything. He was Cardinal Ratzinger. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> It could have been anything, and he went with Pope, you know, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Boring, yawn. Totally ignoring my suggestion. Pope Awesome Robot the First. <laughs> the only awesome robot this land has ever known. So he's in a little bit of trouble now, and let's have a little discussion about why he's in trouble. Okay, it's no big deal, really. Once you explain it, it's going to be fine. 
Um, he let his friend uh, stay in the priesthood uh, after molesting uh, 200 deaf boys um, over the course of 25 years. So, not such a big deal, really. <laughs> what does that come out to month to month? Um, <laughs> not even a deaf boy a day. Uh, and his defense, you know, them deaf kids never said nothing. I mean, sure, they were doing some crazy stuff with their hands, but <laughs> who can tell? Who can tell, you guys? Uh, but it's, it's interesting because it has taken the Catholic Church into a place where they're talking a little bit about celibacy and how that might not be a natural thing for humans to live in a celibate state. Um, and I just, it gives me hope because it makes me think maybe someday in the future, that there will be a time when two girls will be walking around and one will turn to her friend and say, oh my God, Courtney, your priest is such a slut. And I just, <sighs> it makes me feel happy. So, um, so uh, almost the anniversary of 9-11, um, 10th anniversary, it's an important time. I will be running an open mic that night, so that's good news. Uh, and it's interesting because it's amazing how right after the fact, like it changed everything and like it became this unquestionable excuse. And, and I was on an airplane uh, soon after 9-11 because I'm a patriot and a hero and because I wanted to go someplace very far away. Um, <laughs> and uh, the stewardess, you know, I'm a vegetarian and the stewardess brought me um, a ham sandwich and I said, excuse me, I ordered a vegetable sandwich and she told me, oh no, we don't do special orders. Not since 9-11. <laughs> really, Flo? <laughs> so what you're telling me is if I, if I don't eat a pig today, uh, the terrorists have won? It's interesting. I, speaking of pigs, I think a lot about education. And um, so when television came out, it was supposed to be this great educator. Like the idea of television was that it was going to uh, break down the class structure because anyone could get this amazing college education through educational programming. But then we didn't really use it for that entirely. Like it's hard to remember those lofty goals when the television is showing, you know, skanks pole dancing for the love of Brett Michael. You know, it's weird. <laughs> And the internet is the same way. Like the internet, you can you can like contribute to a wiki, like to try to solve cancer, or you can watch a, a, a YouTube video uh, of a pig fucking a goat. And um, highbrow, lowbrow, you know, it's both things. And in a way, that's inspiring. Like because that pig, that pig wasn't sure he was going to get to fuck that goat. He had he had to get on a box. <laughs> he had to make a plan, like a bored looking goat. And I just, I just feel so inspired, and I know that if that pig can fuck that goat on the internet, I can finish my degree at Phoenix Online. Thank you, I'm Virginia Jones. <laughs> <laughs>